Welcome to The Break Room Stories, the audio anthology of the world's best weird, surreal, and absurd fiction. I'm head editor Carl First. For this installment, we're honored to present Silent Houses by Rebecca House. I love how this story's plot twists around back at itself, like a snake swallowing its own tail. From the first few moments, there's a building sense that the characters aren't being honest with each other, and it develops into a suspicion that the narrator isn't being honest with herself or with us. Rebecca House resides in Prince Edward County, Ontario, and when she is not the CEO of a busy household, traveling, or freelance writing, she is plotting out her next dark fiction story. You can find her stories or articles published on commuterlit.com with painted words and in anthologies like Hallucinor from ID Press and The Stand from Polar Expressions Publishing. Silent Houses was previously published at commuterlit.com in December of 2016. And now, Silent Houses. Tall weeds danced around the small, broken-down cottage at the bottom of the hill. The pebbled driveway was littered with broken twigs, and the front porch had collapsed near one end. Jake strained his thick neck. The leash tightened in my hands. Hold on, I said. He turned his yellow head and looked up with deep brown eyes before letting out a deep sigh and sat at my feet. The gray skies and cooler temperatures meant a lot of people who vacationed in the various sized cottages in this resort, deep in the quiet hills of northern Pennsylvania, would stay inside or run to the local town. I swiped open the camera on my phone and snapped a few quick shots of the house. When I had chosen to bring our family to this resort, I had no idea the gold mine I would find. There were almost equal numbers of empty cottages as the inhabited ones. This area had been hit hard by the last recession, and this particular house looked like it had sat empty for years. I picked up Jake's leash and started down the hill. I had never been caught or thrown off any of the properties I explored. Luck seemed to follow me. Even so, after years of exploring forgotten places, my heart was clutched and my stomach knotted. Like any obsession, the unexplainable high of breaking and entering into locked-up houses or buildings, photographing the interiors, and then extracting myself with no sign of security or police was too hard to resist. Like a game of chickens kids used to play. Except, instead of jumping off the tracks... I pushed the boundaries of how far and how long I could explore. It had become a game. The harder the building to access, the greater the accolades from a group of like-minded peers. We called ourselves the Amazing Abandoned Places Group. This faceless online community might be surprised to find on the other side of the screen was an almost divorced mom to three kids. I walked up to one of the mature trees that provided shade for Jake and stroked his whitened ears. Good boy. Now, I won't be long. My mother had taken my brood out for the afternoon, so I had a few hours of freedom. I turned and looked at the quiet house, tried to figure out the best way to access it. Sometimes, in these places, the front door was already open. Kids, or homeless people, taking up residence. But, not here. No, here a large two-by-four was nailed across the doorframe. Adrenaline zipped through my veins, my heart raced. The house seemed familiar, but I couldn't place my finger on it. I had never been to this resort in these country hills before. And my group? Well, most of them were from Ontario. Jake growled deep in his throat, and his hairs on his neck bristled. I glanced over my shoulder and froze. A tall, lanky figure walked up the hill and stood at the top of the driveway. I plastered the rehearsed look of confusion on my face and tried to come up with a plausible excuse why my dog was tied to a tree on private property. The figure waved and I let out a breath stuck in my throat. It was just Sam. Sam was a chatty, Harley-riding, divorced dad who lived down the road from the place we'd rented for the summer. 
he was the one who gave me a brief history on the house. The story about it being occupied by the owner's brother for years. A strange man, the kind you didn't want around your fire pit. Sam spun tales of the various renters who had been there after that, each one leaving the place a little more destroyed. Hey, he called out, and then walked down the driveway. Thought I spotted you out walking this old man. Jake thrust his pink nose into Sam's outstretched palm. What are you doing down here? I, well, I... The flimsy excuse about looking at the fascinating landscape flew right out of my head. He smiled, deep wrinkles in his tanned face. He was at least 15 years older than me, with a college-bound daughter, good-looking, in a rough sort of way. You were checking the cottage out, weren't you? No, Jake seemed to want the shade. I pointed up at the tree, my cheeks heated with the lie. Sam winked. Of course. He sauntered over to the front porch. Can't get in this way. You'll fall right through. See the rotted wood? I wasn't going to do that. Carrie, you have been walking by and staring at this house for the last week. I saw you snapping photos. What else were you going to do? Come on, there's a back door. I paused, noticed how the clouds darkened in the sky. Storms seemed to move in too quick here, rolled in over the valleys and lakes. A sharp breeze brushed my bare arms. Come on, my daughter and her friends did the same thing once. Went inside. There's something about an abandoned place, isn't there? But what about Jake? If it rains? I nodded up, but Sam shrugged his muscular shoulders. He's protected by that tree. Does he look unhappy? Jake had nestled into the tall grass. He let out a large grunt. I tucked my phone into my jeans pocket and, without another thought, followed Sam around to the back of the property, jumping over the large tree branches in the backyard. Sam walked ahead, held a screened door ajar. Here, hold this door for a minute. I stood beside him, wondered if the cottage was truly unlocked. Sam pushed his shoulder up against the wood door. It creaked until, at last, it gave way under his weight. He waved me inside. Enter, my fair maiden. You aren't coming in? I asked and tried to hide my disappointment. His yellow bandana slipped down over his forehead. No, I get claustrophobia. When I had to come and get my daughter, I just stood here and yelled. It's not a big cottage. Thanks. But my feet didn't move, not yet. I looked up at him. He was about a foot taller than me. Why are you helping me? This is breaking and entering. Well... I know that door is always unlocked, and what if you need help? He scratched his beard and looked away. And maybe you'll have me over for a drink one night? Introduce me to your mom? She's single, right? Of course he noticed my mother. The tall, good-looking blonde was often the focus of most men. Nothing had changed since high school. Most of the boys commenting on how hot my mom was. It annoyed the hell out of me even now, but I want it inside that house. Yeah, okay. Deal. Watch those floors. If they're anything like the porch, some of it's going to be rotted. I walked past Sam into what used to be a kitchen, and he closed the screen door after me. I'm right here, he said. Thanks. I turned away, pulled out my phone, and snapped pictures. The house was a mess. Beer cans were piled in a disgusting ceramic sink. There were no appliances, just gaping holes where they used to be. A thick layer of black grime covered what used to be a linoleum floor. It was open concept, almost like a bachelor apartment. In one corner sat an old cast iron fireplace, its grate wide open. A scurrying sound came from inside the long pipe that led up to the ceiling. Rats. I hate rats. The familiar sensation I had earlier when I first came upon the house intensified. The base of my skull prickled. Some revelation or insight about the house or previous occupants wormed itself to the surface of my consciousness. Call it a sense? Instinct? But more often than not, it was correct. I was not gifted psychically, but sometimes pieces fell together and I caught a glimpse of a life inside the house. Pushed up against one wall was an old, tattered couch. 
The cushions had been removed and holes were chewed across the bottom and the back. A strong smell of urine, mold, and stale cigarettes permeated the air. Off to one side appeared to be a small washroom, but what captured my interest was the narrow staircase at the far end of the room. It led down, which I found interesting since I assumed the cottage was one level. I stepped around the garbage, old food wrappers, and feces that covered the floor. My finger tapped over and over on the screen as I tried to capture everything. At the staircase, I peeked down. It was dark. My heart rattled deep in my chest. I hated dark staircases. They perpetuated a fear, lingering, from my childhood. Back then, I had been part of a group of kids that spent humid summer nights sauntering around the neighborhood. It was typical. Our parents socialized in the backyards, and we wandered the streets, gossiping and pretending to be older than we were. An old, run-down house at the end of our block had been a fascination for us all year. It had a long, winding driveway up a small hill, and we had heard rumors of an old man who lived there alone, but no one had seen anyone in years. Someone said the old man was a ghost, an apparition, seen only by those who had death hovering at their shoulders. We scoffed at such ridiculous notions, death and spirits. We were the generation of Freddy and Jason. We loved a good thrill but we weren't fooled into thinking any of it was real. Carrie, go on up. A particularly annoying boy, a small skinny kid with big brown eyes and crazy black hair named Derek. He taunted me. He was the only kid shorter than me, and most of the time we shared a cheery bravado, often making similar jokes to offset our insecurities. Nah, you go. I had shrugged and eyed the two-story house with peeling paint, with some trepidation. I dare you. He smiled, knowing full well I prided myself on never turning down a dare. It's not a big deal, just an old house. A lump formed in my throat. Part of me didn't want to go. But of course, I went, climbed up the grassy front yard and up to the front porch. It was quiet. The typical evening chirp of birds had gone silent. I paused, looked down at the gaggle of friends all waving me onwards. I turned the front door handle, hoped it was locked, but it wasn't, and instead swung open with the customary scary movie squeak from the rusted hinges. Dust particles drifted in the stale air, but the house was not destroyed inside as I had expected. What shocked me the most was the outline of a figure at the top of the staircase. A person who wobbled on two thin, long legs and who pointed a bony finger at me. What the hell? I heard the words from the figure, saw the sunken cheeks and deep sockets of what looked like a starved elderly person who was almost skeletal in appearance. I couldn't decipher if it was real, a ghost, or a bit of both. I screeched when he took a slow step down the stairs, flew onto the soft grass, and shouted at my friends, Someone's there! Run! We all took flight like a flock of birds in every direction. I glanced back over my shoulder. The door was open, and I expected to see the old man, but no one was there. I almost stopped and went back, but a strange feeling came over me, like an icy bucket of water had tipped all the way down my back. I ran as fast as my legs would go until my lungs burned with fire. It had taken me weeks before I had walked near that house again. My friends thought I had played a trick on them, howled in disbelief about how I had tricked them. So I stopped talking about it, and the whole experience faded away, like other childhood memories, until I started exploring abandoned places. Not sure what I was searching for, just that I felt compelled to break into houses and buildings again and again. Today, looking down the staircase in shock at a shadowy figure, this old man, now hunched at the bottom of the stairs of this dilapidated cottage far away from my hometown, he was what I had been seeking. He turned around. I couldn't move, couldn't breathe. He stood up, but this time he didn't point at me, but stepped back and waited. I caught a look of sadness on the sunken bony face when I was flung forward down the stairs, bouncing like a rag doll.
I tried to cry out, to tell the old man to help me, to stop this horrible thing, but he just shook his head as I landed in a pile at his feet. Children! I croaked, picturing the three of them abandoned and alone. Unbearable pain of every kind coursed through my entire body. Sam's heavy boots thumped down the stairs after me. The old man leaned over, and I felt his cold hand on mine as he whispered in my ear, They will be safe and fine. Your mother and their father will care for them. The pain started to ebb away, and I found I could move. He grabbed my elbow and helped me up. I grasped onto him, swaying back and forth like a tree in the wind. Come now, child. You ran from fate once, but not twice. A calm acceptance washed over me as my legs rooted themselves to the ground. What was done was done, and it was with no surprise I saw my broken body at my feet. The old man guided me toward the stairs, but I paused, compelled to glance where Sam now kneeled over my lifeless body. The old man tugged at my arm. Don't look back. You don't want to see that. As we ascended up the stairs, the dark cottage filled with light. Somehow, he opened the front door, and we stepped into the sunshine. Jake waited near the tree, unleashed. Him, too? Of course. He was waiting for you. The old man no longer looked decrepit, but regal in a way. His white hair flowed, and his cheeks were no longer bony, but healthy and full. The three of us walked away together, down the road, away from the cottage.